season 39, war number 11, and we are up against Swedish Alliance. This time my team will be Tykra, Kitty Pride, and Professor X. I will be taking path 1 in section 1, as well as that man thing, Mordo on the root node, and Apocalypse on the buffet node, path 3 in section 2, as well as that Nimrod, then I'm gonna be taking that Gore and Penny Parker mini bosses as well as that Ebony Maw boss. Gonna be a lot of Tiger action as well as a few Professor X fights and a couple fights with Kitty Pride as well, but only two of those. Up first we have a thing on the personal space regeneration node, and I'm gonna be taking this fight with Tiger. The game plan is very simple, I'm just gonna be treating this thing like any other thing and only thing I really need to keep an eye on is his rock stacks and that I never leave him at 15 at the end of any combo, heavy or special attack. If you do leave him at 15 and your neutralize falls off, your next hit will trigger unstoppable, so as long as you don't do that, he doesn't really do anything. The Neutralize shuts down the regeneration buffs, the unstoppable, as well as the unblockable on his specials. So, all he really is is a slightly tankier than normal defender, with that protection he sometimes gets if he uses heavy attacks. Or if you parry stun him. Tigra doesn't hit hard enough on her basic or special attacks to trigger the protection that way, so you don't have to worry about it usually. Then we have a Misty Knight on the Masochism Overtime node, and I'm gonna be taking the fight with Professor X. I don't have anything here to deal with the Masochism node, but that is not a problem. The biggest issue with this fight is Misty Knight's evade, and as soon as I get to 25 channeling charges, Professor X completely bypasses evade. So, now all I need to do is just either punch her with basic attacks until she drops, or use a couple specials here. I do have the mutant power boosts active to help Professor X along, but he really doesn't need them for, for a fight like this. Misty Knight's health pool is pretty small, so even without the power from the mutant boosts, you can simply just spam a couple specials with the mind control, and that should be more than enough to take her down. He's already well below 50% before I can even get to my first special too, and the rest, well... Yeah, a single special too was all it took. I did build my warpath here so that I could have my Professor X fully ramped up for the boss. Next up we have a man thing on the masochism overtime and strike counter fury nodes, and I'm taking this fight with Tigra. As for why I'm using Tigra here, well number one, she shuts down the masochism regeneration with her neutralize because it is a buff, but the neutralize also shuts down the buffs that Manthing tries to place on you with his special attacks or by nullifying other buffs. And if you can't get those buffs, you will not get poisoned either, and you don't really have to worry about Mystic Dispersion. On top of that, Tigra's damage does not come from critical hits, so you don't have to worry about Manthing ignoring critical damage bonuses, and your damage is unaffected well for the most part. The plan was to spam big special 2s to nuke down the defender, but with some bad AI at the start, I went with special ones instead. And the reason why was to simply just keep neutralize up on the opponent for as long as possible and as much as possible, because if I need to start baiting specials by dashing away from them, it's gonna create problems with my senses falling off, him applying those buffs on me, which then trigger MD and poison and all that, so... Instead of having to deal with all that, I'll just use the special ones instead. Next up we have a Mordo on the Scared Stiff node, and I'm taking the fight with Professor X. Now, I'm running very, very low on the big mutant power boosts, as well as invulnerability boosts, so I use the special 3 defense boost instead, as well as the smaller power boosts. Now, Mordo's special 3 damage is very small, so I was feeling confident with just the special 3 defense boost, 
But if you really want to take this fight safely, I would I would suggest using an invulnerability boost instead. And this is exactly why. Mordo did get to his special 3 here because he simply didn't, didn't want to throw a special and then the power gain phase happened and he's ex extremely defensive when that happens. So I ate one of those special 3's, it didn't do anything meaningful and now I'm just trying to do what I wanted to do to begin with, get 100 challenging charges, get the special 3 and then spam specials until the defender goes down. I can parry stun him and punish him well stunned just fine because I bypass evade. And all that being said, now the fight should be over. And I say should because usually when I get the special 3 with Professor X, I can simply keep spamming special 3s with the power boosts. But I fell short. So I got the special 2 instead. Didn't get any crits there. Threw another special 2. Mordo blocked it, even though it was unblockable. Went for another one. Same thing. And now the mind control is over. And he's not dead. Luckily, Professor X's damage doesn't disappear even after the mind control ends. And all I need to do is land a few more hits to get to another special 2. And then just throw that to finish him off. I did remember going in that he can block unblockables, which is why I did try to intercept him with the special 2s instead of just throwing them whenever I had one. It didn't exactly work as planned, but he went down without any big problems. Next up we have an apocalypse on the buffet over time and sloped armor nodes, and I'm taking this fight with Tigra. And just like in the previous war, again I am very comfortable fighting him with Tigra, I'm very comfortable punishing all of his animations with my heavy attacks. So I'm gonna be just baiting heavy attacks, special ones, punishing them with my heavy attack to get power as well as, well as to stack up ruptures, and then dropping big special 2s to nuke him down. Now, I say special 2s, but all it took was a single special 2. It got me back up to a special 1, threw the special 1, and he went down. The fight took 25 seconds, and that was a rank 4 apocalypse, with a pretty beefy health pool. Next up we have a black cat on the sloped armor, and another node that I can't pronounce. If you need to know it, you can pause the video here. And I'm gonna be taking the fight with Professor X. The game plan here is to do what Professor X does best, spam specials until the defender goes down. And black cat here doesn't really benefit from the nodes at all, so it's a very simple fight. The biggest problem with her is that cleanse she has, and I did kind of forget about it here. I tried to go for a parry heavy, she cleansed the parry stun and tried to combo me, but Professor X's falter saved me from that. I learned from my mistakes and first parried to trigger the cleanse and then went for a re-parry to go for a parry heavy. Now instead of going for a special 3, I decided that a special 2 would be just fine. Black Cat's health pool is very small, so just to save some time, I'm just gonna be spamming the special 2s instead. And it worked out great. The fight went down pretty fast. Next up we have a Magneto on the sloped armor and static defense nodes, and I'm gonna be taking this fight with Kitty Pride. And once again these nodes don't do anything for the defender, which is why I'm a little bit surprised about the placement. But if I had to guess, it's basically just diversity placement. Now, before going in, I wasn't sure if I wanted to take this fight with Kitty or Tigra. And I ended up going with Kitty because her playstyle is not as risky, I guess, as Tigra's is, and since I don't really want to risk having to use any more resources than I need to, I went with Kitty Pride instead. Now the game plan here is to take him down most of the way with basic attacks, and also build up some prowess. Then I'm baiting a special one here, facing the last hit for some extra prowess, chaining in my special two, and the damage should be more than enough to take him down. And it is. Even without recall mastery, Skitty Pride is a great war attacker. 
Though for some fights, she can be a little bit slow. Talking about slow, and next up we have a Nimrod on the strike counter block penetration and never back down nodes, and I'm taking the fight with Tigra. Now this node also has the soaped armor node, so Nimrod here has a very high chance to glance my attacks depending on how many armor ups he has. And with three of them, I believe the chance is 90%, so that is wonderful. The start of this fight is very very slow, I'm simply just gonna be waiting the armor ups to fall off before I can really start doing anything. Now the cool part about Tigra's neutralize against a matchup like this is that while yes, glancing can prevent her from triggering her neutralize, it cannot prevent her from re-triggering the neutralize once it's already active. So as you saw there with the three armor up buffs, I was glancing my attacks, but as, but as soon as I got a neutralize up on the opponent, it didn't fall off for as long as I kept attacking them. Now I did mess up the start here, I didn't mean to get to a special 3, but Mystic Dispersion pushed me there, and now I messed up again. I didn't have my neutralize active when the armor ups came back, and now I'm struggling once again to get a neutralize up. And the way this fight is going, it is looking like a timeout at this point. I really need to pick up the pace here, get the neutralizers up at the right times to prevent his armor of buffs, and then get my senses back up and get back on track. That is what I need to do here if I want to take the fight without losing an attack bonus. And the armor ups finally fell off, but now he used a special 2, which made him unstoppable. So, just to get the neutralize up on him in time for the next set of armor ups, I parried him a few times, hit him with a light attack to trigger the neutralize, and now everything is looking fine. With this special one, I have my senses back, no armor ups on Nimrod, and everything is looking just fine. With the extra damage from the rupture that I got with my special 3, those special ones were hitting very hard, and just a couple of them were enough to take the guy down. Definitely not my fastest or cleanest fight, but Tycro works there just fine as long as you play it right. And next up we have a Gore on the safeguard miniboss node, and I'm taking this fight with Tycro. Now the game plan here is to just first corner him with basic attacks, then bait a special one, punish it with a heavy attack, should get me to a special two, I use that, and Gore either goes down, or at least very close to it. Now this fight is one that is very easy to do with Tigra. You can't really mess it up. You don't have to do anything special. Even if your senses fall off, the guy will go down eventually. The neutralize prevents the regeneration. So as long as you're not straight up eating hits or combos into your block with all those debuffs, the fight will go down in time and there's nothing to worry about. Next up we have a Penny Parker on the Stunning Reflection and Polkadot Power miniboss nodes, and I'm taking this fight with Kitty Pride. Now, the plan with Kitty is to just get 10 prowess and then be fully unblockable, ignoring the auto block that Penny has, and that makes the fight extremely easy. Now, that being said, I also don't really understand this placement. The biggest issue with Penny is her auto block, and the way she gets those spider charges outside of her special one is by the attacker gaining bars of power. But since this is a Polkadot power node, if you use someone who doesn't inflict damage in debuffs, you're not gonna be gaining power, so as long as you don't bait a special one from Penny, she will never be able to auto block. So you can technically take this fight down with any champion that doesn't inflict damage in debuffs, and that's just feels weird to me as a defender placement. But in this case she does use those special ones, so that plan would be out the window with other champions. So with Kitty here I simply just do medium light combos with the unblockable and the fight will go down. Well, not fast, but it's not that slow either. It is extremely safe, there is basically no risk at all. 
unless you somehow drop an input or something. But even then, Kitty Pride is incinerate immune, so if you eat a special 2, you shouldn't be taking that much damage from it. I have eaten special 2s from Penny with Kitty Pride before in Alliance War. There should be a video of it somewhere on my channel. And yeah, I didn't do much. Now, with this fight, there weren't any issues, so nothing much else to say here. No recoil masteries, only basic attacks, and the fight took under 2 minutes. So yeah, it's not fast, but it's not that slow either. And next up we have the final fight of this war. An ebony mob boss that I'm gonna be taking with Professor X. And the game plan here is the same as always. Get the special 3 with 100 channeling charges. And then spam special 3s until the fight is over. The issue here is that I don't have the big mutant power boosts left, so I'm a little bit scared about how that's gonna go. I might not have the damage to be able to spam special threes. Now, to start this fight off, I spam heavy attacks whenever I get a chance to do so, either by baiting special ones or heavy attacks from Ebony Maw, because that is the fastest way to ramp up the channel charges. And as soon as I get to 100, I don't need to worry about heavy attacks anymore. Now, as you may have noticed at the start, I used an invulnerability boost here instead of a power start 1 boost, or an advanced power boost, as they are called. And the reason why is because Ebony Mo reduces the ability power rate, I believe, at the start of the fight while he's focusing, so you don't get the full benefit from the boost. And I, I just don't think it's worth it. Anyways, now I'm at my special 3 with 100 channeling charges, so if this goes as well as the previous fights go, I should be able to spam special 3s. Unfortunately, I didn't have enough damage to do so, so I'm gonna be spamming special 2s instead. Now, luckily Professor X is a beast with so much damage that the special 2s are enough, and this fight is actually the fastest one I have had against the Mo bosses so far. So in the future, I might just prefer using the smaller boost instead. As for the results, we did end up winning the war 12 to 5. And I really don't think Swedish Alliance was trying their best, as they already knew they were gonna be disbanding at the end of the season.